up on this edition of Hawkeye News. Red Oak ISD says farewell to Superintendent Dr. K. Wagner. On July 30th, Red Oak ISD saw the end of the seven and a half year era as Dr. K. Wagner has left the nest to take on the challenge of a much larger district. We'll have the details in a full report later on our show. Plus, we welcome back Hawkeye News reporter Katie Stanglin as she is headed to the high school and will bring us a new segment this year on Hawkeye News called What's New at the WC? News on Fish Camp coming up. Also, we'll have one of our most popular and informative segments here on Hawkeye News called Counselor's Corner. This month, we check in with our wonderful counselors to see what students need to know to get off to a successful start. And later, Hawkeye News crime reporter J.D. Foster gives us an inside look at the new drug testing policy for extracurricular participants. Details straight ahead on this exclusive report. And finally, it's an election year in 2004, and Hawkeye News is proud to bring you updates each month, now and through January, concerning information that will help you become more aware of the election and the issues involved. All coming up on this edition of Hawkeye News. You're watching Hawkeye News with Christian Henson, Natalie Hillary, Sports with Brady Sapp, News coverage from the Junior High Bureau with Lexi Below, plus academic and student life reports with our Hawkeye News team. Hawkeye News. Leadership you can depend on. Welcome to this first edition of Hawkeye News for the class of 2005. I'm Christian Henson. And I'm Natalie Hillary. It's back to school time once again and a new season for us here at Hawkeye News. Natalie and I will be your hosts this year on Hawkeye News, brought to you monthly by Had It and Project Success. We would like to thank Red Oak ISD for the opportunity to bring you the latest news stories from around our district. And at the end of the program, we'll tell you how you can contact us and give us comments and suggestions as well as ideas for news stories. Before we get started with this month's headlines, we want to welcome to our show our newest Hawkeye News reporter, Camille Webster, who is standing by with a special look at new faces around Red Oak High School and the district. Welcome, Camille. Thanks, Kristen and Natalie. It's great to join the Hawkeye News team. Coming up, we'll meet a lot of new faces around our campus this year and introduce you to some new teachers across the district. That and much more later on in the show. Back to you, Kristen and Natalie. Thanks, Camille. We look forward to hearing about that in just a few moments. But first, this month's top stories. The end of Hawkeye News for 2003-2004 came to a close with the second annual Hawkeye News Awards Banquet held on June 26 at the Red Oak High School cafeteria. The banquet was a big success as Project Success Drug Education and Alan J. Oliver Productions hosted the event which not only honored the news team but also welcomed special guests, the 2004 Shattered Dreams main character actors. Producer Alan Oliver worked very hard to produce awesome video clips on all the news team members as well as the Shattered Dreams actors. Special presentations were given to all participants with beautiful Oscar statues being presented to our news anchors, senior Rachel Selby, along with sophomores, myself, Christian Henson, and Brady Sapp. A special video presentation was shown starring our very own Hawkeye News pioneer, Rachel Selby. The event was also highlighted by a wonderful barbecue dinner provided by Brett and Brenda Sapp. 
We would also like to thank Ms. Donna Knight, Ms. Katrina Knight, Ms. Sandy Stanglin, and Ms. Brenda Sapp, and the other members of the committee who did all the decorations and food for this event. The news team for 2004-2005 was also announced, and you will be introduced to them later in our show. One of our most popular informative segments here on Hawkeye News last year was our segment we call Counselor's Corner. This segment will be presented several times throughout the school year to inform students of important news from Counseling Office. This month, we check in with our wonderful counselors to see what we students need to know to get off to a successful start. We went to visit with our counselors, hoping to get them on camera, but they were extremely busy, so we asked them about what's new from the counselor's corner. According to Ms. Hervey, the first and second weeks are very busy with schedule changes and helping students get off to a good start. The counselors will also be doing visits throughout the year to the classrooms to help students stay motivated and on top of their academic goals. Each monthly motivator, as they like to call it, will have a title that describes just what the program is about. For example, the first six weeks, the counselors will be talking about survival skills and taking responsibility. In the second six weeks, they will be focusing on beginning prioritizing, honesty, not avoidance, and setting goals now. The third six weeks will be titled, Are You Stressed or Need a Dessert? Now that sounds interesting. And the fourth six weeks will be titled, Emotional Roller Coaster and Relationships. The final two six weeks will be, Are You Tax Out? And How Do You Spell Relief? We will head back next month to sit down with our wonderful counselors to see what all this means and to find out just what students need to be successful this year. Remember, our counselors care about us very much, so if you need them, stop by and let them set you up for a successful school year. As we told you at the beginning of our show, we'd like to again welcome our newest Hawkeye News reporter, a familiar face around Red Oak High School, Camille Webster, to bring us a closer look at all the new faces around Red Oak High School and the district. Camille? After having such a great time being a part of Shattered Dreams last year, it's great to be back in front of the camera as a member of Hawkeye News. Just like being a part of Hawkeye News is new to me, so is the many new faces as students will see as we walk the halls of ROHS. Let's take a look at new faces and new places around Red Oak High School. We welcome Mr. Wilburn Raisler, who is the Interim Superintendent of Red Oak ISD. Mr. Raisler will be in charge until a new superintendent is named and will take over in January. Here is a list of other new teachers and staff members from around the district. We'd like to also welcome new school board members John Hawkins, Brett Stanford, and newly appointed member Dr. Mark Stanfield to Red Oak ISD as well. Get to know all these wonderful new staff members and welcome them to Red Oak ISD. Reporting for Hawkeye News, I'm Camille Webster, and back to you, Kristen and Natalie. It seems like just yesterday when Katie Stanglin joined Hawkeye News two years ago as our junior high correspondent. Now, she is headed up to the high school and will bring us a new segment this year on Hawkeye News called What's New at the WC. For more on West Campus Life, let's go to Katie Stanglin, who is reporting this month from Fish Camp. Katie? Thanks, Natalie. It's great to be back on Hawkeye News for the start of a new school year. I hope everyone had a great summer. Welcome back. Instead of reporting from the junior high this year, I have the privilege of bringing you all the updated info from the West Campus in our newest segment to Hawkeye News called What's Up at the WC. What's up at the West Campus this month? Well, for freshmen like me, it's time for Fish Camp, where we learn a few important things we'll need to know now that we're in high school. 
Fish camp was held on Thursday, August 12, 2004 at the West Campus. While there, we went through five sections where we were talked to by various people, including Miss Lassiter, Miss Shaner, Miss Osborne, Miss Guest, Mr. McLinn, and Mr. Burns. Each faculty member told us a little bit about what they do and how the West Campus runs. Also, we learned about electives, ID badges, and the Renaissance program. When we were done with all the sections, we turned in our paperwork to get our first high school schedule. We would like to thank all the teachers and staff who helped with planning this event. It was very informative and a big help for all us freshmen who are adjusting with our new high school lifestyle. That's it for this month at the WC. I'm Katie Stanglin, Hawkeye News. August is not only a busy time for our student athletes, but it's also a very busy time for our own award-winning Mighty Hawk Band. To bring us a closer look at the new leadership of the band for the 0405 school year, we go to one of the very band members herself, our very own Hawkeye News reporter, Tamara Llewellyn. Tamara? The Mighty Hawk Band is once again hard at work practicing for hours each day for the upcoming marching season. This year, the band is under the direction of seniors Chase Carruth and Caitlin Moon. Chase and Caitlin have been working hard all summer with band director Mark Pease and his staff to keep the winning tradition of the Mighty Hawk Band going this year. It will be aided this year by section leaders Brian Lamb for the Brass and Michelle Drum for the Woodwinds. Joe instructors this year are Lauren Beatty, Austin Denson, Zach Dixon, Chris Farrar, Manuel Gonzalez, Christine Holloweck, Nicole Jericho, Randy Ransom, and Sarah Suarez. The color guard will be under the directions of captains Chelsea Belote and Jessica Lancaster. The band will once again perform at halftime at the Varsity Hawk football games, as well as several competitions throughout the year. We will bring you more on the Mighty Hawk Band in future editions of Hawkeye News. Come out and support our band this year. I'm Tamara Llewellyn, Hawkeye News. And what was a sad day for many staff members and students who knew and respected Dr. K. Wagner, our former superintendent, July 30th became the end of a seven and a half year era for Red Oak ISD. Dr. K. Wagner, who has been superintendent of schools for Red Oak ISD since January 1997, has left the nest to take on the challenge of a much larger district in Grapevine Colleyville ISD. Dr. Wagner, who had been credited with leading Red Oak ISD to higher test scores and a recognized district status, was recruited by Grapevine Colleyville and was offered the position as their superintendent at the July 26 GCISD board meeting. Dr. Wagner has long been a strong supporter of many student organizations at Red Oak, including Hawkeye News. Dr. Wagner and her husband Rick are presently looking for a new home in the Grapevine Colleyville area, but for now, Dr. Wagner will commute each day. Dr. Wagner will be taking over a district with over 13,000 students. While the challenge will be great for Dr. Wagner, most at Red Oak ISD know she will handle it beautifully. We say good luck, Dr. Wagner, and thanks for all your help and support over the years. And welcome, Mr. Raisler. We look forward to getting to know you in the months to come. Every four years, something happens that affects the entire nation. No, it's not the leap year, it's the election of our president. This year's election looks to be like a close call. The leading candidates, Democratic nominee John Kerry and Republican nominee, our current president, George W. Bush, are in a close race with the newest polls placing John Kerry just ahead of President Bush. In a poll placed by CNN, likely voters preferred Kerry 47% and Bush 43%. This year, Hawkeye News is proud to bring you a segment all about the election. While most of us aren't old enough to vote, we should still be informed and make our own decisions about this election. We hope that all of the information we give you this year will help you become more aware of the election and the issues involved. If you would like to learn more about John Kerry, you can go online to www.johncarry.com. And if you would like to learn more about George W. Bush, you can go online to www.georgebush.com. This month's District in 60 Seconds is brought to you by Red Oak Car Wash. Located at 311 East Ovilla Road. Hello, Red Oak ISD. I'm excited to be in the place that has always belonged to our now graduated senior anchor, Rachel Selby. This section, called District in 60 Seconds, will be a challenge for me, but it's a segment that allows us to highlight what's going on around the district in a quick segment we like to call D60. Graduation 04 Big Success. 
Randolph High School class of 2004 walked across the stage of success in a well-attended graduation ceremony at the Potter's House Church in Dallas on May 29th. Beware of construction zone. Once again, the administrators asked that students be very cautious when driving on Red Oak High School as construction is continuing and will be for the next several months on the new Career Tech Center as well as the new football field press box. Please observe speed signs and warnings and let's have a safe, fine, free school year. <music> National Night Out Against Crime Held The annual National Night Out Against Crime was held on Tuesday, August 3rd. Many Red Oak High School students took part in the event that was coordinated in Red Oak by Officer Boyd Brock of Red Oak PD. <music> Last Chance to Order Shattered Dreams 2004 Students will receive their one last chance to own the 2004 Shattered Dreams Alcohol Awareness Movie. Orders will be taken until October 1st. Students can pick up an order from either the main campus or the West Campus High School offices. Don't miss your chance to own this life-changing movie. And that's your district in 60 seconds. We are proud once again to welcome back one of the busiest members of our news team, our sports anchor, Brady Sapp. Brady is here for another exciting year of Hawks and Lady Hawks sports action. Brady? Thanks, ladies. The beginning of school is a very busy time for sports around Red Oak High School, and this month we take a look back at another gold medal winner, as well as a closer look at the upcoming football and volleyball seasons, with returning senior sports reporter Robert Kent and his new partner, sports reporter Jared Ushery. All this and more after a word from our sponsor. This month's Hawkeye News Sports is brought to you by Danny Humphreys at State Farm. Hello Hawks sports fans, let's talk sports. This month we start off a look at what has become the total domination of shot put and discus by the Carter family. This time with big sister Michelle, now at the University of Texas, it was time for younger sister Deandra Carter to shine in Austin in May. Deandra and fellow teammate 2004 graduate Deanna Smith traveled to Austin near the end of the school year to represent Red Oak at the 2004 State Track and Field Championships. Deandra picked up right where her big sister Michelle left off the four prior years by winning not only the shot put gold medal, but also taking the gold in discus. The Carter family tradition started many years ago with Deandra's father Michael, who was a state champion himself. After a couple of years of walking in the shadows of Michelle, it was finally Deandra's time and she made it the most by blowing away the competition. Deandra has already been picked as a very early favorite to repeat in this her senior year. We wish her the best of luck this coming year and in the future. Big sister Michelle is also still doing very well at the University of Texas and has recently won the gold at the Junior Olympics. We will keep up with the Carter sisters throughout the rest of the year. As we take a closer look at football and volleyball, I would first like to welcome our returning sports reporter, Robert Kent, and our newest member to the sports team, senior Jared Ushery, who joins us as a field reporter this year to report on the Hawks and Lady Hawks. Robert and Jared. Thanks, Brady. Jared will bring us a closer look at the Varsity Hawks football team later on in this report. But I'd like to start off with the Masters of the Court our very own defending district champions, the Lady Hawks volleyball team. The Lady Hawks are once again off to a great start, and that should be no surprise to the Lady Hawk fans who have become accustomed to district championships and playoff runs. Before school had even started, our ladies were already winning big matches over Mesquite Horn, Richardson Pierce, and Woodrow Wilson. The ladies will be in action against some of the toughest competition the area has to offer in August, as they will participate in the Lady Tiger Tournament at McKinney North High School as well as the Northwest Tournament before moving towards the district opener on September 21st at Lancaster. The Lays will play home games on August 24th and September 7th before the first home district matchup with Maybank on September 24th. The Lays will be led by a new group of stars with the graduation of Lori Burrow and Tori Dacus. The team will look to junior Emily Hollenbeck to control the net. It should once again be a great season for Lady Hawks volleyball. So get on the bandwagon now and come out and support our Lady Hawks. That does it from here. Let's go to Jared for a look at the Varsity Hawks football team. Jared! Thanks, Robert. Well, this is football. Welcome to Football 04 Hawks style. The Hawks have been hard at work for the past few weeks, gearing up for what it looks like to be an exciting season ahead. The Hawks will have several good tests in pre-district before once again battling what looks to be Ennis, Corsicana, and Lancaster for one of the top three spots in district for the playoffs. The Hawks will look to many new faces on varsity this year to make up those final few yards the Hawks came up short of the playoffs in 2003. The men of Maroon will be tested early once again with a trip to Hewitt Midway to take on the Panthers, 
who look to be one of the playoffs favorites from their district this year. After facing the Panthers, the Hawks will be home for back-to-back -back games against Justin Northwest and a strong Fort Worth Southwest team. The Hawks will then travel to Midlothian to take on our arch rivals from the West before returning for a homecoming battle against the Woodrow Wilson Wildcats on September 24th. The district schedule kicks off with the battle of what many feel could determine a playoff spot with a home match up against Lancaster before tough road games at Ennis and Corsicana. While the district is still one of the toughest in the state, Coach Osborne and his returning and new staff are working hard to get the Hawks out of the playoff drought. Come out and support the Hawks this season. I'm Jared Usher reporting for Hawkeye News. Back to you, Brady. Thanks again, guys. We look forward to having great seasons from our Hawks and Lady Hawks this year. While the Lady Hawks will once again be under the directions of coaches Stanfield, Garcia, and Porter, the Hawks, on the other hand, will have many new faces on the sidelines this year as coaches have been hired by the athletic director, Coach Osborne, this summer. We would like to extend our welcome to all the new coaches at Red Oak High School and Junior High. That brings our first busy months of sports to a close, but we'll be back in September to bring you more from football, volleyball, and a look at cross country as well as information on the fall tennis team. We would like to thank our coaches and Mrs. Sandy Stanglin for helping us with all the news in the world of Red Oak High School sports this year. Come out and support our student athletes all this season. Christian and Natalie, back to you. With Katie moving up to high school, it's time to bring you a new face for our segment we call Junior High in Review. The next couple of years should be in the capable hands of Hawkeye News reporter and Red Oak Junior High 7th grader Lexi Belote. Lexi, what do you have for us this month? Thanks, Natalie and Christian. It's great to be a part of the Hawkeye News team. This month, we asked the question, what's that everybody's wearing at Red Oak Junior High? And what are those things the cheerleaders are passing out? They are spirit bracelets and the junior high cheerleaders have been making the bracelets to get the spirit pumping in Red Oak Junior High. We would like everybody to feel like they are an important part of the junior high. The bracelets are free, a gift from the cheerleaders. Just as the small bands are linked together to make a cool bracelet, the student body of Red Oak Junior High will unite to make a great year. That's it for this month and we are off to a great start. I look forward to covering much more good news from Red Oak Junior High and until next month, reporting for Hawkeye News, I'm Lexi Below, and that's your Junior High in Review. Back to you, Christian and Natalie. This month's Drug and Crime Report is brought to you by The Bassett Firm, Texas Trial Attorneys. Our next report is one of much interest to those around Red Oak High School, and we'd like to welcome our new crime reporter for 2004-2005, J.D. Foster, to give us an inside look at the new drug testing policy for extracurricular participants. What's the word, J.D.? Well, Christian and Natalie, the word is Red Oak High School administration is speaking loud and clear. Not only do student athletes need to get the message, no pass, no play, they need to know at ROHS, extracurricular activities are for students who are drug free. Quincy Carter, former Dallas Cowboys quarterback, flushed millions and ended his career when he failed his drug test this fall. This kind of zero tolerance is not only seen in the NFL, though. Now Red Oak High School has similar rules for play. Red Oak ISD decided to step up enforcement of this policy last spring by voting in a new drug testing policy, which required all students participating in any extracurricular activity to participate. Testing began on August 2nd this year. While Red Oak High School students don't have quite the same risks in testing positive as Quincy, the consequences for testing positive under the new policy are less than agreeable. For the first positive test result, the consequences will be removal from participation in competitive events for 30 days beginning the same day the principal receives notice of the positive test results. The student will be retested at the end of the 30-day period. On the second occurrence of a student testing positive, the student will be removed from competitive events for one year with a mandatory test at the end of the period. In the event a student is found positive a third time, the student will be permanently banned from competitive extracurricular activities for the remainder of their stay in the district. During each stage of the process, the sponsor of the activity, parents of the child, and the principal will meet to allow any explanations to be made and to discuss the problem. The parents and student will be encouraged to seek help during these conferences. While the consequences may sound scary, the process itself is fairly simple and straightforward. Red Oak ISD has employed a certified third party to perform the tests. The process begins simply by the student checking in. From there, the student signs a few forms and is given the cup. When the student has provided the sample, he or she returns to the testing station where they turn in the sample and sign a sticker, which is then put on the cup as a sort of seal. 
This part of the process ensures that samples are not confused and switched. The student is then finished and may leave the testing site. Some students may be questioning the legality and possibly even the effectiveness of drug testing. Students can be assured that the district has maintained a strict adherence to the legalities of drug testing in schools and that drug testing has, if used properly, been proven a method for reducing drug use in not only schools, but also in the workplace and other organizations. In 2002, the United States Supreme Court greatly expanded the rights of educators to drug test students. This ruling stated that all extracurricular activities are a privilege, not a right, and therefore any extracurricular activity could be tested as long as the testing did not extend to general school enrollment. This ruling is clearly within reason. Drug testing has proven to be effective if used properly. A notable example is Hunterdon Central Regional High School. A survey taken there during the 96-97 school year revealed that 45% of the school's 2,500 students had smoked marijuana, 70% drank, and 13% of their seniors had used cocaine. Somewhere over 10% of their students had used hallucinogens and 38% of the school seniors had ready access to heroin. The school quickly responded to what was clearly an unacceptable issue and began drug testing in September of 97. By 1999, another survey proved the effectiveness of the program. The numbers showed Hunterdon to be improving in 20 of 28 categories. Seniors, for example, using cocaine dropped from 13 to 4 percent, and sophomores reporting little to no use of drugs or alcohol was found at 41.8 percent as opposed to 47.3 percent in 96-97. In September 2000, the school temporarily removed all random testing when the American Civil Liberties Union filed a lawsuit against the district on behalf of students claiming their Fourth Amendment rights were violated. Since then, the evidence that drug use has gone up is staggering. Hunterdon is just one of many examples across the country of successful drug testing programs. In our own area, Mesquite, Joshua, and Van Alston are running successful drug testing programs and both Waxahachie and Midlothian are considering the prospect. There is no question in the minds of our administration here at Red Oak that drug testing can help the district. Students should understand, however, that despite the Supreme Court rulings, drug testing is still a very controversial issue with much debate on the topic still being heard. Christian and Natalie, it is clear that with students' cooperation, Red Oak can add its name to the long list of success stories with drug testing. Thanks, Shady. That was an awesome report, and we hope no students participating will ever have to find out the consequences of failing a drug test. Let's make our school the shining example we all want it to be. We'll see you next month, Shady. One of the big topics of news we hope to cover this year is all the new development around our district and community. With the new police and fire station now open for business for the past several months, the new attention turns to the new Red Oak City Hall complex that is scheduled to open in early September. The new City Hall building has been under construction for the past several months and is getting ready to open its doors to the public in the coming days. Many will remember the fire that destroyed the old City building and the police department a couple of years ago. The city was fortunate to be able to receive temporary office space from Red Oak ISD in the south wing of the Acorn Academy while the new facility was being built. The new facility will be the center of what city officials call the Red Oak Town Center and should be a wonderful facility not only for city offices but also for the city's first municipal library, which is set to open in September or October. The municipal center will also have a beautiful conference room for special events. Hawkeye News will get a tour of the facility in the coming months so we can bring our students a closer look at the beautiful new facility as well as other new construction around Red Oak. Well, that about does it for our first show of the new school year. That's right, Nat. And we look forward to bringing you much more the rest of the way from now until graduation day in 2005. We also want to remind you that we would really love to hear from you. So if you have any news ideas, comments, or suggestions, you can write us at hawkeyenews at redoakisd.org or give us a call at 972-617-4312, mailbox number 4. You can also watch us on Varsity TV on the Internet. To check out Hawkeye News or any other news shows on VTV, you can click on www.myvtv.com. I'm Christian Henson. And I'm Natalie Hillary. Until next time, thanks for watching and make it a great day.